yes so welcome once again to the class and let's continue our discussion on later mogul kings i am planning to cover all these things before your pre so that uh, you can revise these things okay so up to here we had learned in the previous classes that uh, uh, all these things we had learned right about ahmed shah okay so during ahmed shah reign uh, ahmed shah abdali had invaded india during the rule of ahmed shah bahadur okay uh, during reign of ahmed shah bahadur ahmed shah abdali had invaded india so in order to save delhi from ahmed shah abdali's invasion ahmed shah surrounded Pan uh, surrendered punjab and multan to the afghan ruler ahmed shah abdali okay and all these things we had learned now let us move on towards our next later mughal king which is alamgir second 1754 to 1759 okay this is the uh, this five years he was the emperor alamgir 2 he was made mughal emperor by imadul mulk okay he was made mughal emperor with the help of a noble imadul mulk who was the grandson grandson of nizamul mulk who was imadul mulk Imadul Mulk was the grandson of Nizamul Mulk, and who was Nizamul Mulk? Nizamul Mulk was the founder of de facto independent state of Hyderabad, which we have already learnt in the previous class. Okay, so Imadul Mulk was the grandson of Nizamul Mulk. So he was made uh, Alamgir II, who ruled from 1754 to 1759. He was made Mughal emperor with the help of Imadul Mulk, uh, uh, named Mughal uh, noble. Okay. With the help of noble called Imadul Mulk, okay, who had who now became wazir, okay, and uh, Imadul Mulk here Imadul Mulk became wazir, and uh, as a wazir he was the de facto ruler actually, okay, Imadul Mulk, uh, uh, although he made Alamgir II as the emperor, but uh, he himself became wazir, and uh, actual powers were with Imadul Mulk. during during alamgir second the actual power of ruling the actual ruler ruler was imadul mulk de facto ruler was imadul mulk not uh, alamgir 2 alamgir 2 was just for de jure sense okay alamgir 2 was like president and uh, imadul mulk was like prime minister okay so he had become the de facto ruler at delhi okay and he had uh, appointed uh, he he had made um, alamgir to as the mughal emperor too okay so that's the thing means the king is completely dependent on his nobles uh, he he is not able to do anything on his own the king is unable to do anything on his own he is completely dependent on his nobles okay during his reign the battle of plassey 1757 battle of plassey happened during alamgir too okay who was the seventh later mughal king uh, during the reign of alamgir 2 who ruled from 1754 to 1759 during his rule battle of plassey took place in 1770 uh, 1757 okay battle of plassey took place in 1757 in 1759 he was assassinated by imadul mulk okay in 1759 uh, the person who made him the mughal emperor imadul mulk assassinated him too okay the same person who made him the emperor assassinated him okay so in 1759 he was assassinated by imadul mulk so actually the thing is these kings these later mughal kings uh, especially the last 3 3 four uh, later mughal kings they were like slaves actually they were not kings but they were more like slave okay in the uh, in the de jure sense just uh, in order to show off they were kings okay because they were from a particular dynasty of moguls so that's why they were being appointed as kings because people will not give recognition to the person who is actually ruling okay the person who is actually ruling to him people will not give any recognition so that's why in uh, legal terms they were ruling in the name of alamgir 2 this imadul mulk was actually ruling in the name of alamgir 2 but uh, but alamgir 2 hardly had any power alamgir 2 did not have any power all the power lied with the imadul mulk okay imadul mulk was the actual powerful person 
सो एक्चुअली डी फैक्टो रूलर ऑफ इंडिया वॉज एट दैट टाइम इमादुल मुल्क ओके सो इन सेवनटीन फिफ्टी नाइन इमादुल मुल्क असोसिनेटेड आलमगीर सेकेंड नाउ वॉट डज इट मीन बाय वजीर वजीर सिंपली मीन्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर ओके किंग मीन्स किंग इज लाइक प्रेसिडेंट ओवर हियर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस किंग इज लाइक प्रेसिडेंट एंड वजीर इज लाइक प्राइम मिनिस्टर ओवर हियर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस बट वेन द किंग इज स्ट्रांग वेन द किंग इज स्ट्रांग द किंग एक्ट्स एज प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड प्रेसिडेंट बोथ वेन द किंग इज स्ट्रांग द डी फैक्टो अथॉरिटी इज ऑल्सो द किंग ऑनली एंड द डी जुअर अथॉरिटी इज ऑल्सो द किंग ऑनली लाइक ड्यूरिंग द रेन ऑफ अकबर ड्यूरिंग द रेन ऑफ अकबर वॉट वॉज देयर डी इफेक्टो किंग वॉज ऑल्सो अकबर एंड डी जुअर किंग वॉज ऑल्सो अकबर ओनली ओके सो देअर वॉज नो सच अथॉरिटी बट वेन अकबर वॉज अ चाइल्ड एट दैट टाइम डी फैक्टो रूलर वॉज समन एल्स एंड अकबर वॉज द डी जुअर अथॉरिटी वेन अकबर वॉज अ स्म स्मॉल चाइल्ड ओके यू लर्न अबाउट दिस इन द मिडिवल हिस्ट्री दैट अकबर दैट Akbar's father had died i think if i am not wrong i am not remembering it properly okay but in medieval history, history you learn this thing you call it petticoat rule or something like that okay you call it petticoat rule or something like that so you learn about it in the medieval okay anyways what does it mean by wazir wazir means prime minister okay now now do not compare it with uh, today's prime minister who is answerable to the parliament and uh, etc today's prime minister concept is very different today's prime minister is answerable although he uh, he can act he he can uh, act uh, he can he can do whatever he want but he is answerable to the parliament in theoretical terms although in literal terms this is not being followed okay nowadays this is not being followed the prime minister has become the emperor nowadays but uh, 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 all the way from 1947 till 2014 uh, it was like uh, the prime minister was answerable to the parliament okay although in 1975 to 77 the answerability has gone had gone during emergency in 1975 to 77 Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was not answerable to the Parliament. Also, she was doing whatever she wants, arbitrarily. Okay, and uh, now nowadays after twenty fourteen, uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji is uh, doing whatever he want. But but anyways, in theoretical terms, in a democracy, uh, Prime Minister is answerable to the Parliament. Okay, but uh, uh you must remember one thing very well that uh, in all this political stuff which are there in the indian express and the hindu and etc this political stuffs are not at all important for your examination okay so you must remember these things uh, only thing is that in your interview some political stuff might be asked to you in your interview some pol- political stuff might be asked to you but uh, uh, in the mains and the prelims no political question is asked at all so no need to read the political news that uh, someone was uh, detained from the parliament and all those things okay so no need to read all those the only thing is uh, now it, uh, now the defamation is uh, under uh, uh, discussion okay so you must know what is defamation case and all those things you need not know the political uh, uh, motive behind the defamation uh, how the uh, opposition is being crushed how the and never in your interview also you should never accept the fact that democracy is it is in danger never accept this fact in your interview in your interview and your main censor writing please never accept the fact that india's democracy is in danger okay you cannot accept it although the truth what is the truth the truth is that the democracy in india is in great danger very great danger but you should never accept the truth in your examination okay you should never accept it neither in mains and uh, in prelims never such question will be asked and in mains and uh, interview also you should never accept the fact that india's democracy is in danger okay you should always say that uh, there is democracy only thing is that uh, in presence of a strong leader sometimes there are abrasions what you should say that there are abrasions in uh, in the rule of strong leader 
but the democracy is not in danger it does not mean that the democracy is in danger okay it just means that the leader is strong so that there are uh, aberrations in the uh, parliamentary procedure or something like that in the uh, in the politics there is aberration from democracy so in presence of strong leaders this happens so the you should not uh, say that uh, the democracy is in danger but the truth is very different from that in fact but a bureaucrat can never uh, talk of the truth okay a bureaucrat can never talk the truth because you you will have to work under the government only one day right after you go into the service you will work under the government only right so uh, talking against the same government under which you are going to work that will uh, not suit you okay that is not suitable for you so you should take the favor of the government only you should uh, never speak something against the government after 2014 okay so what does it mean by wazir wazir means prime minister east india company was active in bengal region now we will learn one more fact that during the rule of alamgir second what was there during the rule of alamgir second the east india company what was not active in delhi okay during this period during the period from 1754 to 1759 the east india company was active in bengal region okay not in delhi region okay so now shah jahan second okay the east india company was active in bengal region during the reign of alamgir second and not uh, it was not active in the delhi region during the reign of Alam- alamgir second okay it was active in bengal region english east india company okay so it it was yet to reach delhi okay now shah jahan third 1759 to 1760 he was made mughal emperor by imadul mulk who made the who made shah jahan third as uh, mughal emperor he again the same person who made alamgir second as the emperor the same person imadul mulk made uh, shah jahan third also the mughal emperor okay and uh, he stayed uh, in power only for a very brief period that is for a few months okay for a few months he stayed in power shah jahan third during his reign a powerful rohilla chief najibuddaula now during the reign of uh, shah jahan third a powerful rohilla chief najibuddaula became very influential okay and imadul mulk uh, fled uh, fled away from delhi okay najibuddaula took over imadul mulk okay najibuddaula became very powerful Ro- he was a rohilla chief rohillas were afghans okay who were rohilla i have already discussed in the previous class rohillas were afghans okay actually so rohilla afghan chief najibuddaula became very influential during the reign of shah jahan third and uh, he went to delhi and uh, as a result uh, due to the fear of nizab uh, najibuddaula imadul mulk fled delhi okay due to the fear of najibuddaula imadul mulk fled delhi okay and what was shah jahan third doing all this days he was just sitting like that okay he was just sitting like that he was he was he was just in background he was not doing anything okay just for the name sake he was an emperor but actually he was being treated like a slave over here okay during this time marathas emerged as the strongest force in north india in north india marathas emerged as the strongest force during this time i have already discussed uh, the figure with you okay i have already discussed the figure with you right the figure which i had discussed in the beginning very beginning beginning of this course okay which figure i had discussed in the beginning of the course this this figure i had discussed this figure in the beginning of the course this see marathas this this big area this all areas or all area was Mara- marathas area okay this complete area okay this complete region was of marathas okay this complete region so so marathas in fact had become very powerful okay so the strongest force in north india and the south india also even not only in north india but also south india okay marathas were emerging as very powerful state okay
during this time during the reign of shah jahan third uh, who ruled from 1759 to 1760 marathas emerged as the strongest force in north india marathas deposed him okay marathas deposed shah jahan third okay and raised shah alam second as the next mughal emperor okay marathas deposed shah jahan third and uh, raised shah alam second as the next mughal emperor okay now the next mughal emperor will be shah jahan second now Najibuddala, who is this Najibuddala? He was a supporter of Ahmad Shah Abdali or Ahmad Shah Durrani, you can say. Okay, the the uh, the invader. Okay, Durrani. So Najibuddala was the supporter of Ahmad Shah Abdali or Ahmad Shah Durrani, whatever you can say, who was an invader who had come from Afghanistan. So this Najibuddala was also Afghan, Rohila Afghan. And this Ahmad Shah Abdali or Ahmad Shah Durrani was also an Afghan. Okay. So, both of them uh, came. Okay. Both of, he, Najibuddala actually supported Ahmad Shah Abdali during the invasion which Ahmad Shah Abdali did. Ahmad Shah Abdali appointed him in Delhi also. Okay. So, when, uh, when Imadul Mulk fled Delhi, okay, you learnt over here that Imadul Mulk fled Delhi during the reign of Shah Jahan III. So, when Imadul Mulk was fleeing Delhi due to the uh, uh, fear of Najibuddala, so Najibuddala had got this confidence, Najibuddala had got this confidence with the help of Ahmad Shah Abdali, because Ahmad Shah Abdali had appointed him in Delhi. Okay. Now, Shah Alam II, 1760-1806. Why did he rule for 46 years? Because he was not ruling at all. Shah, Shah Alam II was not ruling at all. Okay. Everyone else was ruling, but this, this person was not ruling. So that's why it seems to be a quite a long period. Okay. He became Mughal Emperor during a time when Mughal Emperor was crumbling from all the sides. Okay. There was no power left with the Mughal Emperor. Only he was in the namesake. Okay. So he became Mughal Emperor during a time when Mughal Emperor was crumbling from all the sides. For the first 12 to 13 years of his rule, okay, for the first 12 to 13 years means up to 1773, from 1760 up to 1772 or 1773, for, for the first 12 to 13 years, he stayed out of Delhi. Why he stayed out of Delhi? Because of the fear of powerful noble Imadul Mulk. Because he feared that Imadul Mulk would kill him, okay. So that's why he did not, he stayed out of Delhi, okay. He was a Delhi. He, uh, he, though he was a Mughal emperor, but he stayed out of Delhi because of his uh, because of the fear of his own noble Imadul Mulk. Okay, so it's a very funny situation. Okay, the king is afraid of his noble. Okay, so what uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, king he he should have been? You can imagine how weak he he would have been. Okay. So powerful noble Imadul Mulk because of his fear Shah Alam II stayed out of Delhi for the first 12-13 years. In 1772 what happened? He was escorted to Delhi. Okay. In 1772 Marathas escorted him to Delhi. Okay. He, they helped, Marathas helped him to go to Delhi. Marathas helped Shah Alam II to go to Delhi in 1772. So he was escorted to Delhi under the protection of Marathas under the leadership of Mahajji Sindhya. Okay. So Mahajji Sindhya, uh, because Marathas were the strongest force in North India uh, at that time during the reign of Shah Alam II. So that's why Shah Alam II was escorted to Delhi under the protection of Mahajji Sindhya, okay, in 1772. Now during this time, during the reign of Shah Alam II, there was a famous Persian couplet. During the reign of Shah Alam II, there was a famous Persian couplet. Couplet means Doha, Doha, okay. Santanate Shah Alam Delhi Te Palam, okay. Palam is a village near Delhi. So Santanate Shah Alam Delhi Te Palam means the, uh, the rule of the Mughal Emperor uh, ranges from Delhi to Palam, okay. This is the meaning of this. Now Palam is a village near Delhi, okay. Very near to Delhi, okay. Some 100 200 kilometers uh, area around Delhi, so such is the small area. So, so Shah Alam II was 
so the reign of uh, uh, mughal emperor uh, ranges from delhi to palam such was the persian couplet santanat shah alam delhi te palam so uh, during the reign of shah alam second this was the means uh, up to delhi only the king was confined okay up to a few kilometers from delhi okay in 1788 what happened in 1788 for a brief period rohila chief gulam qadir captured okay in 1788 what happened rohila chief gulam qadir captured and plundered some regions of delhi okay now why gulam qadir did all these things okay rohila chief gulam qadir in 1788 rohila means afghan okay so rohila chief gulam qadir in 1788 captured and plundered some regions of delhi okay he even blinded shah alam second why why did he blind him because shah alam second had uh, sexually exploited gulam qadir okay shah alam second was a person of bad character okay so shah alam second had sexually exploited gulam qadir when gulam qadir was a young boy teenage boy so at that time shah alam second had sexually exploited gulam qadir so that's why in 1788 gulam qadir rohila chief gulam qadir took the revenge by capturing and plundering some regions of delhi and he even blinded shah alam second okay and took his revenge during his reign during the reign of shah alam second okay shah alam second during the reign of shah alam second a uh, two significant battle battles took place okay the third battle of panipat in 1761 and the battle of baksar in 1764 so during the reign of shah alam second two significant battles took place you must remember this thing the third battle of panipat which took place in 1761 and the battle of baksar which took place in 1764 okay in 1803 the british east india company captured delhi it was also during the reign of shah alam second during the reign of shah alam second only last last period of shah alam second during the last 3 uh, years of shah alam second the british east india company captured delhi also okay so after 1803 the mughal emperors became pensioners of british east india company means uh, at the mercy they they had to live at the mercy of british east india company okay british east india company used to give them pension okay so they became pensioners of the british east india company so uh, british east india company practically captured delhi in 1803 okay now akbar shah second after uh, after this shah alam second akbar shah second 1806 to 1837 okay during this time the british east india company became the de facto authority okay although in de jure sense they used to say that mughal emperor is the uh, actual king okay they used to say like that but in de facto sense in de jure sense akbar shah too was the uh, ruler but in de facto sense means in practical terms the real authority was with the british east india company and the mughal emperor could hardly exercise any power mughal emperor could not exercise any power okay during the reign of akbar shah too means akbar shah too was completely helpless king he could not exercise any power okay although the coins were issued in his name in the initial years in the initial years the coins were issued in his name but uh, later on the coins will also be withdrawn from his name so during this time the british east india company became the de facto authority and the mughal emperor could hardly exercise any power during during the reign of akbar shah second during the reign of akbar shah second in 1835 okay the british east india company discontinued calling itself a subject of the mughal emperor in in 1835 what happened he ruled from it uh, he ruled up to akbar shah second ruled up to 1837 okay akbar shah second ruled up to 1837 okay but during his reign in 1835 what happened the british east india company stopped calling itself a subject of the mughal emperor okay british east india company said that we are no longer a subject of the mughal emperor okay means you are not a king like that they starting say, started saying okay and also discontinued issuing con- coins in his name instead of uh, issuing coins in the name of uh, this person uh, akbar shah second they started issuing coins in the name of queen or something like that okay so uh, i don't i am not sure whether in the name of british queen or not 
बट स्टॉप इशूइंग कॉइन्स इन द नेम ऑफ दिस पर्सन अकबर शाह सेकेंड ओके मीन्स द कॉइन्स वे आर नॉट इशूड इन द नेम ऑफ मुगल एम्प्र नाउ नो लॉन्ग आर द कॉइन्स आर इशूड इन इन द नेम ऑफ मुगल एम्प्र ओके सो ड्यूरिंग इज रेन इन एटीन थर्टी फाइव द ब्रिटिश ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी डिसकंटिन्यूड कॉलिंग इट सेल्फ ए सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द मुगल एम्प्र एंड ऑल्सो डिसकंटिन्यूड इशूइंग कॉइन्स इन इज नेम ही गेव द टाइटल ऑफ राजा टू राम मोहन रॉय ओके वॉट डिट अकबर शाह सेकेंड डू अकबर शाह सेकेंड गेव द टाइटल ऑफ टाइटल ऑफ राजा टू राम मोहन रॉय ओके अकबर शाह सेकेंड गेव द टाइटल ऑफ राजा टू राम मोहन रॉय दैट इज वाई राम मोहन रॉय इज कॉल्ड एज राजा राम मोहन रॉय ओके नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट द दिस एम्पर दिस पर्टिकुलर एम्पर अकबर शाह सेकेंड अकबर शाह सेकेंड स्टार्टेड अ सेकुलर फेस्टिवल कॉल्ड एज फूल वालों की सैर ओके स्टार्टेड अ सेकुलर फेस्टिवल कॉल्ड एज फूल वालों की सैर इन दिल्ली ओके सो अकबर शाह सेकेंड स्टार्टेड फूल वालों की सैर इन दिल्ली विच इज अ सेकुलर फेस्टिवल ओके एंड टू प्रमोट हिंदू मुस्लिम यूनिटी सो फूल वालों की सैर वॉज स्टार्टेड बाय अकबर शाह सेकेंड इन दिल्ली टू प्रमोट हिंदू मुस्लिम यूनिटी ओके ब्रिटिशर्स वे आर वेरी स्मार्ट ओके दे डिड नॉट वॉन्ट दैट पीपल शुड रिवॉल्ट दे वे आर वेरी स्मार्ट दे डिड नॉट वॉन्ट दैट पीपल शुड रिवॉल्ट सो वॉट डिड द डू That's why although they had taken over Delhi in 1803 itself, okay, you had seen over here, right? In 1803 itself, during the reign of Shah Alam II itself, in 1803, the British East India Company had captured Delhi, but still they were calling themselves Mughal subjects, okay? They were calling themselves the subjects of Mughal Emperor up to 1835, okay? So that's why although they had taken over Delhi in 1803 itself, yet they they issued coins under the name of mughal emperor up to 1835 okay so they said that mughal emperor is the sole authority up to 1835 they kept saying although although they were ruling from 1803 only but still up to the year 1835 they kept on saying that mughal emperor is the sovereign after 1835 they stopped issuing coins coins also and they stopped calling themselves subject of the mughal emperor also okay but why why this much time they took gap why almost 32 years they kept silent they keep on kept on saying that uh, mughal emperor is the sole uh, sovereign for 32 years why did they do so the reason is very simple the reason is very simple the reason is that if if they would have said in the in the year 1803 itself if they would have said the british east india company is the sole ruler now so what would have happened some people might have revolted because the legacy of mughals was very great okay mughals had very good image in the people's mind okay in the people's mind mughals had a very good image okay because uh, most of the mughals were secular okay most of the mughals were secular so that's why mughals had a very good image in the minds of the people unlike delhi sultanat okay at the time of delhi sultanat those rulers were by god okay religiously by god most of the rulers but uh, mughals most of the mughals were secular except one or two mughals like aurangzeb okay so so the mughals had very good image in the minds of the common man okay so uh, that's why uh, uh, although they had taken over delhi although the east india company had taken over delhi in 1803 itself yet uh, they were issuing coins in the name of the mughal king up to the year 1835 to show off that the mughal emperor is still alive he is still ruling okay we have not taken over but uh, uh, but soon soon the uh, the mughals started losing their presence okay in the minds of the people so as soon as they thought that now the time is ripe that we should uh, take away all the power from the mughal emperor in de jure sense also okay so they took over all the power in the legal terms also from the mughal emperor in 1835 okay so this is a very important fact that even if the king had no power okay even if the king he was powerless he still the britishers used the term your highness to address them okay the indian kings were very emotional if someone was someone lost the battle the indian king used to abuse him okay or uh, does not used respectable words for him because indians are very emotional in politics okay but the britishers were not at all emotional in politics so 
even if the king had no power still the britishers used the term your highness to address them okay they never addressed uh, the king who had lost the battle in a uh, humiliating manner okay they never do it so they always uh, use the sweet language okay in order to get their work done akbar shah second had sent raja ram mohan roy to england so that his pension and privileges are not reduced okay so akbar shah second was uh, very uh, you can say uh, helpless in front of the britishers so akbar shah second had sent raja ram mohan roy as his as his uh, uh, messenger okay to england so that his per pension and privileges are not reduced they are continued so that's why akbar shah second had sent raja ram mohan roy to england okay now bahadur shah second or bahadur shah zafar 1837 to 1857 during the reign of uh, bahadur shah zafar revolt of 1857 took place okay during the reign of bahadur shah zafar revolt of 1857 took place and he was proclaimed as the emperor of india and the leader of the revolt by the rebels okay the rebels who had uh, revolted in the revolt of 1857 they proclaimed they proclaimed bahadur shah zafar as the emperor of india and the leader of the revolt because they like like the mughal uh, emperors okay so so that's why the, as the uh, mughal emperors had very good image in the minds of the people so that's why even after such a long time even after everything going going into the hands of british east india company still uh, still the common masses uh, liked the mughals very much okay so uh, by the rebels who had revolted in 1857 bahadur shah zafar was uh, proclaimed as the emperor of india okay and was given sim- symbolic he was the symbolic head of the revolt in of 1857 bahadur shah zafar was the symbolic head of the revolt of 1857 although although he did not contribute in the revolt of 1857 okay because he was too old he was too old in 1857 when he was king he was too old to be uh, fighting at the battlefield okay so he he was not able to fight at all he was 60 plus at that time okay <coughs> so the rebels had called him proclaimed him emperor of india during the revolt of 1857 as a symbolic head after crushing the revolt of 1857 the britishers found him guilty of being involved in the revolt of 1857 the britishers found bahadur shah zafar guilty of the uh, of being involved in the revolt of 1857 so that's why britishers deported him to rangoon where he died in 1862 okay so bahadur shah zafar died in 1862 in rangoon okay why did uh, britishers deport him to rangoon why 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 did the british not let him die in india because if if bahadur shah zafar would have died in india then some people would have been uh, very angry with the britishers that uh, the our mughal king has died our mughal king has died our great king has died okay so some people might have been very sad okay and they would have revolted against the british and this would have this could have uh, united the country once again okay for a 1857 type revolt okay because the death of bahadur shah would have led to some revolt kind of thing okay in 1857 so that's why the britishers what did it, what did they do they d- uh, didn't let bahadur shah zafar die in his own country they sent him to rangoon that is the capital of myanmar at that time okay uh, and uh, there he died in 1862 in rangoon okay in a very sad sad manner okay he was very sad in rangoon okay he used to write poems there okay he was very sad in rangoon so he died in rangoon in 1862 and he was buried there itself in myanmar itself okay so uh, he did even he didn't even get the, the uh good luck of uh, dying in his own country okay so a very sad uh, ending of him uh, uh, in fact uh, his ending was very sad okay so if if he would have died in india then it could have united the country once again if uh, suppose bahadur shah zafar had died in india 
then the people would have united once again that it is only because of Britishers that our king has died. So let us kill the Britishers. So once again the country might have united in a revolt like 1857. But the Britishers did not want this. So they sent Badr Shah Zafar to Rangoon where, the, where Badr, Shah Dafar, uh, Badr Shah Zafar died in 1862 in Rangoon. Okay. Badr Shah Zafar was a very good poet. Wh what does it mean by very good poet? Share Shairi. Okay. He used to do Share Shairi. He used to write, write poems. Okay. Be why, why was he a very good shire? Why was he a very good shire or very good poet? Why he used to write very good shares, okay? Because he had no work to do at all. Everything was with the British East India Company. He was helpless king. So he had no work to do at all throughout the day, okay? So he used to just write poems and pass his time. So that's why, that's why, and there was no mobile or such kind of things at that time. In those days, there was no mobile or laptop or something like that. So he had nothing to do. So he used to simply write poems, okay. So that's why he was a very good shire. He used to write very good Urdu poems, okay. So because he had no work to do, okay. So that's that's how the reign of Badr Shah Zafar ended. So in this way, later Mughal kings is over, okay.